Really quickly before we get into this video, I swear this is one of those videos you need to share with all of your artist friends, all of your producer friends who are really trying to deal with PR people, right? You're trying to get PR services, marketing services, you're looking for a manager, a lawyer. If you're looking for any of these things that cause you to have to deal with a business professional in the industry, you need to be aware of the six things that get covered in this video. Let's go ahead and hop into it. Pow. Pow. What's up everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean and I got to go over six reasons that people don't like to work with artists. I'm talking about business people like managers, PR people, so many people throughout the industry. And keep in mind, this may not be you or you may feel like that it's BS, but this is how people are actually thinking. I'm not trying to kick artists while they're down, but this is what you need to be aware of because that's going to help you navigate certain work relationships when it comes to finding people throughout the industry. For instance, something that a lot of artists do not know is a lot of people don't even want to talk to artists. Maybe, you know, have good relationships, hey, what's up, and be cool and chill, things like that. But especially when it comes down to the business, a lot of people don't like to work with artists. I mean, they want to talk to the manager or some other type of representative. Because imagine a scenario like this, right? I'm a booking manager or I'm a promoter. I bring this artist out to the venue. Things are going on throughout the venue, right? There might be some troubles for the, that are happening before the show or something is up with the money where it has to be paid a little bit later than it might have been because proceeds, whatever might be happening, there are all these nuances and problems that arise. And now if I have to talk to the artist about that, just talking to the artist about these things might ruin the artist's performance in the show and I need the artist to perform and not have a clouded mind or I need the artist to act right. And for them to be their best selves on stage so they perform for the crowd that I brought out that I'm getting paid for because that's my reputation. For one reason or another, true or untrue, a lot of people feel like artists get too emotional, which is number one out of six. They're too close to the business because, hey, keep it real, the artist is the product, so when you're trying to work certain things out, it's hard for them to deal with in the same way a manager might deal with, where managers say, all right, we're gonna give you one this time, but next time around, we need this, this, and this, or we're gonna have an ongoing deal. There's certain things that just managers happen to do that an artist probably wouldn't think to through, or they might actually be a offended if they knew the manager was actually doing it, just to keep it real. And this is not just a going out to a show scenario, it's working with marketers and so many other business people. Which brings me to number two, so many artists have un realistic expectations like when we come to marketing a, a artist might come up to somebody and say yo you know I got $300 can you put me on this playlist and give me 500,000 plays or I want you to run this campaign can you give me like a hundred to 200,000 plays off of these 200 300 dollars no I understand that you want a lot of plays but you got to realize that if it just costs 300 dollars to get those many real plays then there will be so many other people that will be up there in their plays. so many people are struggling to get a thousand plays let alone 500,000 plays for less than the price of an xbox which leads me to number three it's kind of tied into number two and that's just the fact that artists can be so cheap right you have these grand expectations you want all these things but let's just say you give somebody 300 dollars 500,000 plays do you understand if I could consistently just take $300 and get somebody 500,000 legitimate plays? First of all, I would not be charging $300. I would be charging probably like 5K, just a number off the top of my head, but it would be way more than $300 because you have to realize, right? A person might take that $300 and actually spend that $300 and get you a result off of that, but what are they doing to feed themselves? You have to realize these people need to eat too. A lot of artists are like, yo man, you know, I'm struggling, gotta do what I gotta do, trying to get the most I can for as little as I can. But these people have to eat too, you have to realize. And you can't expect somebody who does not know you, who has no relationship with you, to all of a sudden buy into this, yo man, I'm gonna make you some money, you gonna make me some money. Bruh, I, I don't know you. You just hit me up in my DM. How can you expect somebody to really buy into it? All of this is one of the biggest reasons that artists get scammed. You're not trying to spend any money on some real stuff. So you end up saying, yo, man, I'm going to get this playlist right here for $20. And they say that they can get me 
200,000 plays or they can give me 10,000 plays for $10, for $15, for $20. I've seen these. And then you get fake plays and you're wondering how. It makes sense to be frugal. It makes sense to save money. I get it, you got a tight budget. But at the same time, your tight budget mentality has to face the reality that at times when you're being that cheap, your only options are usually gonna be scams. Now let's bring that around to number four, which is artists are unprofessional. I know, I know it's not all artists, but so many artists are unprofessional. And this can be broken down into a lot of ways, but one of the biggest pet peeves that I hear quite a bit that people complain about is just artists not being prepared, right? Let's just say I have some service, whatever my service is, and there's a certain set of things that need to be done before my service gets done. You have to realize that a lot of people, they just wanna do their job. Right? They don't have a YouTube channel that's meant to educate artists. They don't have any kind of organizations that are meant to help artists come up or worry about indie artists. There's people who have a certain set of skills. They offer those set of skills to do a service. And that's just the reality. They, they want to do their job, go home. They want to execute for you. And they might be damn good at what they do, but they do not want you to spend time educating you. They don't owe you anything and they can spend that time making more money doing something else with somebody else. So if you're unprepared, it makes a lot of people not want to work with you and I get it you're learning this game as you go but that's just something you have to be cognizant of prepare as much as you can and even really before certain meetings or reaching out to certain people or when you reach out to certain people say hey what are all the things that I need just so I can make sure I am prepared that's one thing that can help you be 80% more prepared every single time just asking people what is everything that I need to, to make the best of your time one simple question. And then another thing when it comes to being unprofessional is just the messaging, like how artists talk to people. And this is like this other people who talk to people this way, but we're talking about artists for this particular relationship right now with the business side of the industry. Like the way people message people, I'm talking about just saying, yo, what's up in their DM or sending an email and you send an email asking people to work for you and saying that you want them to do this, that, and the third with no background information on yourself. I'm talking about not an Instagram, page not a link to any music literally no information but you want them to respond but you have to realize these business people right they have a lot of emails and things that they're running through so they might see an email and they might want some more money they might be looking for another project but your email doesn't have enough information to see if they can act on that or if it's worth acting on that so they might literally respond to an email that could be making them less money because the situation looks a lot more together because at the end of the day so many business people are trying to avoid clients that are headaches in the same way a lot of artists have had to learn some hard lessons bumping their head as they move throughout the industry and they wasted their time on things like showcases or certain other parts of the industry a lot of these business people have done the same thing wasting their times on artists or clients that they might have really believed in right there was a time where they were bright eyed coming into the industry and i said man i believe in this artist Right, yeah, I believe and I can do everything I can do for as little, I might even work for them for free. They've learned so many lessons from those scenarios or saying, I'm gonna take this check, I ain't never got a thousand dollar offer from an artist and I'm gonna take this thousand dollars and that thousand dollars somehow became three, four months of headaches that made you wish that you never even took the thousand dollars. They've had their experiences, bumps and bruises. So whether you are that person or not, or you would actually be that experience, they've had these scars that lead them to be very cautious of those situations. So your best bet is to not position yourself or come off like you could be one of those. Get rid of the red flags. That's what this whole video is about. So don't just send these random emails that are generic and give no information. Don't just hit somebody up in a DM and say, yo, and that's it. Or yo, what's up? Or I want you to work for me or let's do business they don't know anything about you and that's just not a great way to approach people. I've seen it all the time. People have hit me up in my DMs like that. To be honest, the mentality, even from somebody who really wants to help people is, look, if I got a lot of action going on, they're going to react to the things that are clear. Certainty is more quickly followed by action than the unknown. So when someone asks a very specific question, then it's a lot easier for them to answer that versus someone saying, yo, how do I blow up? Like that's, that's not a good question in compared to, hey, I'm doing this, that, and the third, what do you think I should do next? So take that thought process and apply it to business and how you try to work and communicate with these business people. Number five, bad attitude, man. I done seen some bad attitudes, 
right? And this is, this is me talking, not just what I have heard and seen a lot of people talk about. I've seen artists act as if they are Beyonce, if they are Chris Brown or some huge artist when they literally have zero followers or when they haven't even dropped a project at all yet on, on Instagram, on SoundCloud. I'm, I'm dead serious and the problem is you don't wanna get a reputation where people are only working with you because you're bringing money or you're an opportunity. Well, first of all, if you don't have a lot going on and you're just trying to get into the industry, that bad attitude is probably gonna keep you from winning and getting far anyway. But if you happen to break through, a lot of times you'll see people working with people only because they're a good opportunity for them. But the moment that that person is not hot, next thing you know, they can't find any help because those people were only working with that headache because it was making them good money. Now, if you ain't worth the money, they're not going to do any, you any favors. They don't want to deal with you in the first place. And some of it does come back to professionalism because there are some genuinely just bad attitude people that aren't necessarily artists, right? It's just, just people in general. There's some just obvious things where if I have to really tell you not to be like that, then there probably is no helping you. But some things when you kind of tie out back a bad attitude coming to professionalism, I think a lot of artists have to realize the value that they're really working with, right? I've seen artists say, yo man, let me into your event. I'm dropping a project the night of and this will be my premiere performance. What does that mean to somebody when you don't have any followers or you don't have a large fan base, right? Are you gonna bring a large fan base to their event? Probably not. So don't sell yourself as if you're doing them a favor. They're doing you a favor by allowing you to perform. In that instance, this is just you coming up, being humble about that situation. We all have to be humble in our own ways and just realize our positioning and who we're dealing with as we try to get to where we go. It just is what it is. And don't even assume that you know about people's financial situation being like, yo man, I could make you a lot of money when they might be straight or they're actually clearly, you know, some levels above where you are but you say, oh yeah, I'm gonna make us some money when they're the one who are doing you a favor. You need them. Because to those people, it's just gonna seem like you're using them. That's just what it is. And last but not least, number seven, lazy. So many artists are perceived to be lazy, right? You have managers that feel like they're working way harder than the artists, but then you have these artists who just want everybody to do everything for them and who want their managers to be Superman and Superwoman. As a matter of fact, there's been a lot of manager artist breakups because these artists have so many of these other traits on this list, like having high expectations of a manager. You're supposed to do this, that, and third. You're supposed to take me from zero to 100 when the manager is like, bro, you don't have anything to manage. Really, I'm trying to do what I can, but it takes time. You have to develop some things. So understand it goes both ways. There are artists who I've seen who are far out working their managers. That's a whole nother scenario. That's a problem too. But there are so many cases, more often than not, I'm seeing managers outwork artists. Maybe it's just because the artist doesn't understand what they're supposed to do, or they don't understand how much work it actually takes. But when you're impatient, you have these huge expectations, right? These unrealistic expectations. And then you're being emotional or having a bad attitude. So many of these things lead you to miss out on opportunities because that lack of patience and lack of perspective is going to have some of these business people not wanting to work with you or only wanting to work with you to a certain capacity. There's a lot of situations where they're like, yo, I rock with this person. I actually really want them to win, but I can't, I can't be up in there with that person. I can, I can do what I can for them, but I, I can't do it all for them. And that's it. Once again, this video is not to kick artists while they're down. It's really for your education, right? It's really for you to understand that this is how the people are thinking so you can make sure that you are not one of those people. You don't set off any one of these triggers because at the end of the day, I feel like a lot of these artists feel like, yo, I'm giving these people money. Like I'm giving them $500. These people are working for me and they should be elated to work for me. When one, $500 isn't a lot to, to certain people, right? That's not the mentality a lot of these business people have because they've been through these bumps and bruises. As I said, throughout the industry or throughout their client work where they're like, eh, is this $500 worth the impact it's going to have on in my life? Is working with this artist going to elevate my career? Is it gonna be great for my portfolio? Is working with this artist really gonna change my life? Or is it gonna be a headache that's gonna make it harder to do my other work and I'm gonna be stressed out and I'm gonna regret taking that money from them in the first place? This is how these people are thinking. You gotta be aware of that because if you start to exhibit a lot of these traits, man, there's so many situations where people will recommend 
right? And once you recommend that person and there's an experience that it, that's unfavorable, one is going to come back looking bad on their brand. So now they're not going to want to recommend you anymore anyway, because it just wasn't a good look for them. So you have to keep all of these things in mind. I hope you take heed to this video. It's very, very real. Artists a lot of times don't hear these conversations because it's more so amongst the other side of the industry. But please be aware that these conversations are taking place. Just don't let them be true about you. And as always, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you like, you might as well share it. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.